I'll tell you what I'd like to do is for people even cutting firewood. You know, that's where, you know, the guys that are cutting timber for a living, yeah. they know how to cut timber. And they and they may even make fun of me, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I've got friends who have watched these videos and think it's kind of funny, but they know that we're doing it right. Right. But where, you know, we really might help is somebody around their house who's trying to cut up a little firewood, so like that dead tree right there. Yes. Wanting to cut that. That's dangerous as a cock gun. Yeah, it could that, fall. That person, that homeowner cutting that trees is apt to get killed. Probably more apt than somebody cutting timber for a living is. Yeah. Because he really doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, and there's dead limbs hanging. That and there's out. stuff it can ricochet off of. And, yeah, yeah, it's just, so that's who, you know, maybe we could help in yeah. some situation. We were talking a little bit about Tim's background. Tim was a, uh, went to uh, uh, Haywood Community College and you yep. got a degree in what forest? Got a, got a degree in forest management technology. And then you went to Western Carolina and got your bachelor's degree in natural resources, natural man resources management. With a concentration of forest resources. And then Tim has a background in, uh, as a lumber buyer. Timber buyer. Timber buyer, rather. Uh, he used to work for, who was that company out of Virginia? I worked for a veneer mill out of Virginia. Veneer mill, yeah. Uh, a veneer mill. Bought veneer logs and I went down the west coast, east Tennessee to New York State. Uh, but I was pretty green when I was doing that. Yeah. I didn't really know what a veneer log was. He said he learned his technique for cutting down dangerous trees or for really felling any tree the right way from a guy named Billy Hurd. Yep. And Billy's in Tennessee now, no longer in the lumber business, but so he taught Tim kind of how to get them down the right way and directionally fell fell trees. Billy helped me a whole lot. And I took what Billy showed me, and, you know, and applied it to what what I was doing every day. Yeah. And uh, it just made perfect sense. Really, really helped me a lot. Smart guy, but Billy's one of the people that can do anything. Yeah. When we were in, in school, Billy's kind of guy who would drive his '69 Chevelle home on the weekend pull the engine out and rebuild it Saturday and put it back in and drive it back to school. Mode. Really? <laughs> they're, uh, all them herd boys, they're, they're smart. They're good people too. Now we've just come across, what's the name of this ridge anyway that we're on? Do we even know? I don't know. Does it have a name? It's got a real name or not. We just crossed from my dad's land over, just over, uh, this, this is old Seven Mile Ridge Road, right? One time it was, we're not, this is a new, we don't went that way. Back over that way, yeah. So we're headed toward Tim's house. It's still, what, 25 degrees out here? Pretty darn chilly. It's pretty cold. <laughs> I'm freezing pretty pretty much right now. But we're headed toward Tim's house. We come across the old the old gap. Hey, you, got hey, you got time to take me to the top of your ridge? Yeah, we got, we're going, we've got to go. We've got, we've I mean, up to the very top of your knob. Yeah, I'd, love to to I'd love to show everybody that. 